this is talk of the town a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around northeast michigan with your host nancy smitham and the latest news from alpena community college with dr olin joynton and now today's talk of the town Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first guest today is Amanda Dozier from Bester Museum, Northeast Michigan. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Nancy. I know that school started and I'm sure you guys are ramping up some programs and got <laughs> lots of wonderful things going on. So tell us what's Indeed. happening. We've actually already started booking school groups for this year, which is fantastic. And um, they're coming as far as Rogers City, Onaway, Oscoda even, um, which is fantastic. It's what we love to do. We love our school groups. But we're gearing up for a few of our fall programs, which is our, our favorite is the Fall Harvest Day Fossil yes. Fest, which is October 5th this year. Um, it's a Saturday, of course, from 12 to 4. It's all sponsored by Lafarge and Specification Stones. And the important part of that is it's all free um, to everyone. They're also going to be doing quarry tours. We'll be Ooh. taking buses, driving out to Lafarge Quarry. Um, and doing that like we did last year, it's going to be fantastic as always. Uh, the list goes on and on of people that are going to be there, anywhere from the fall harvest favorites that we're used to with the corn fiddles and the doll making and the cedar shingle stamping to actual fossil things as well with rock vendors and um, people with questions and answers. Paleo Joe, of course, will be there again. Oh, yay. And that, yeah, we'll be doing planetarium shows again this year, same thing, so it'll be fun as always and um, people please don't miss this it is a wonderful wonderful yes. event it's totally free, free. <laughs> and it's um it's just like a walk walk back in time it is it and is. it's just a wonderful event oh, pie baking contest we can never forget that i don't know i can't believe i just forgot that it's so close to yum <laughs> <laughs> um it is open to you know all bakers um you can spin up to three pies it's any kind of pie you want we're not um making it exclusive to fruit or anything like okay, that okay great so, you make a fantastic chocolate cream pie or coconut cream pie, yay, because those are my favorite. Get to sample. <laughs> Bring them on in. All the, it's sponsored by Neiman's Family Market, so all of the judges are from Neiman's, um, and the, the prizes are sponsored by them as well. You actually get gift certificates to go grocery shopping at Ooh. Neiman's, which is great. You know, a lot of growing families, the grocery bill oh, is sometimes yes. the one thing that gets you the most. Do you have to pre-register? Um, not at all. You just bring in your pie that day um, between 9.30 and 10.30 in the morning. Okay. And we will uh, try not to eat them and then <laughs> sent into the back so that they can be judged. Um, the announcements will be made about 12.30 because the, okay. ju the judges come in at noon and sample all the pies and pick their favorites and we let you know. And Wonderful. from there, yeah, it's a great event. Um, also, uh, some of the other things that we're getting ready for is we have a juried art exhibit right now, which is, again, one of our favorite shows because we open it to artists all over Northeast Michigan and you get quite an eclectic group, um, anywhere from pastels to watercolors to oils to photography it just goes on and on so there's a lot of great stuff um, wow marble photography the reason i say this is it's digital photography but it's not photoshopped by gail stellick um, we're calling it um, i've lost my marbles and they're all pictures that she takes of marbles up close and kind of how it reflects the light and it makes them beautiful oh. pictures but here's a little catch if you bring in a marble of any kind you get to see the exhibit for free. So you receive Ooh. free admission if you just bring us in a marble. Um, she's collecting all these marbles so she can continue doing uh, more photography like this in the future. So that's pretty cool. And then of course, seasonal lights right around the corner. Yes. Um, this year's theme is um, the time for giving. So it's going to be kind of back to that old fashioned way of Christmas. We're going to do our community trees again this year. Where, you know, oh, you we, are? Yes, where we're going back to They're the service back. organizations. But what we're going to do is we're going to take these um, service organizations and have donation boxes for each of them so people can give as ah. well as just, you know, yeah, it's great to have. This is our mission statement and this is our this, but we really want to encourage people to come and give to these organizations. So it's kind of a new twist on the community. Terrific. Tree. Very excited to have them back. We're getting lots of participation from it. So. It'll be great, as always. <laughs> yes, as always. Yeah. And a time before, you know, winter and too much cold weather gets here to get there and see all the buildings and Absolutely. all the displays. And get in that fossil park and dig, dig, dig. Yes. I can't even tell you how many amazing pieces of fossils we've been pulling out of there this year. We found trilobites. We've been pulling out nice chunks of, you know, of course, this ancient little bug that used to crawl around the sea floor. It's been pretty cool. And we were just delivered the other day. Um, what we know of is one of the largest Petoskey stone samples wow. in the area. It's larger than this table. It's huge. Wow. We say Petoskey stone because that's what people more or less refer to, but it's actually a piece of coral from 
ancient seabed, but it's massive. Um, Lafarge had to bring it over on a scoop, and <laughs> yeah, it was wow. It, it's huge, huge. So you have to come check that out as well. It's one of our new favorites that we take everybody out and show right away because it's pretty cool. And planetarium shows every Saturdays at two. Um, this period is going to be the solar system, so they're going to talk about, of course, everything to do with the universe, from the skies to what's in our solar system, what to expect, and so on and so forth. Very cool. Okay, and always an opportunity for um, volunteers. Absolutely, absolutely. We have a great um, volunteer program. We call you in. We have it where you choose what you like to do, um, and then we placed you with that job. So we have everything from cleaning to filing to collections to art handling, so on and so forth. And you get yeah. to see everything that happens yeah. inside the museum. Yeah, and all the behind the scene stuff of our thousands and thousands of artifacts. It's amazing. Okay, yes you do. And <laughs> people, um, you know, what a great thing to do on a nice fall afternoon. Yeah. Get over there and yep. see all the wonderful displays. Yep. And admission is is very affordable, and yeah. especially if you buy a pass, a family pass, at the beginning of the season or the end of the season, whenever. And it, and it doesn't matter because our membership runs 365 days from the day you sign up. So it's not one of those, you sign up ah, in okay. November and it's done in January. So it, it kicks the whole year, and it does. It gives you free admission as much as you want. So you can come four times a day if you want, and <laughs> we don't mind. Okay, and your little store is open too? It is, it is, and it's getting improvements upon improvements upon improvements. Ooh. We're ordering new and new stuff. Um, it's great. We're, I'm having a really good time with this store. We've got ammonite samples and trilobite samples and polished stones and books and all sorts of fun stuff. Yeah, it's great. Okay, and once again, fall harvest day is October 5th. October 5th from noon to 4. From noon to 4, yeah. and get those pies in around 9.30. Yeah. Please. Between 9.30 and 10. 10.30, yep, yep. Any questions, just call me. Three, totally five, six. free. Totally free. Three five six two two zero. You got it, and I'll send you either you know contest rules, anything like that. So just let me know. And the Paxton Quarry um, tours are, yeah. are worth just going for anyway. Right, and they're free. Yeah, <laughs> like they're gonna take you out to the quarries for free. So okay. that'll be cool. All right, thank you very much for thank being you. here, and I look forward to seeing you at Fall Harvest yeah. Days and enjoying all the wonderful time, talent, and energy yeah. that you all put forth thank for you. our community. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be right back with Christine Wedge from Alpena County Library following these messages. Hi, I'm back with Christine Wedge from Alpena County Library. Hi, Christine. Hi, Nancy. How are you? Good. And just like um, Amanda from the museum, as school started, you've got all these things going on. So get us started. I know there's a ton to talk about. Lots of things going on with back to school. And the first thing is this Tuesday at 630, we're having a pictorial history of Alpena schools. That's a presentation from Special Collections. and. We have so many pictures in our collections of schools that were once in Alpena ah. County, schools with names like Garfield School, Jefferson School, um, a lot of schools that aren't around anymore, Central High School, Pic and we have pictures of all these schools. And you know, at that time, in the earlier days, in many instances, they'll just take the entire student body out in front of the school and take a picture. Oh, yes. So if you know someone who went to a one-room schoolhouse or who attended a school that's no longer open in Alpena, this is a chance to kind of walk down memory lane and see oh, some of those old photographs and some of those old school buildings that aren't with us anymore. I went to three one-room schools in the area, so yes. Wow. Yes. That's terrific. Well, then you probably know about the one-room schoolhouse project that Bob Kuyawa is working on, and he's actually working on that with the Besser Museum, and he'll be there on Tuesday as well to talk about some of the one-room schoolhouses, some of the history behind that program. So I think that it's really a neat opportunity to kind of remember, if you're looking on Facebook, all these people are posting their kids' first, you know, first day of school outfits, and if that's bringing back a lot of memories for you, then this program on Tuesday night, 6.30, okay. completely free and open to the public, just a nice chance to walk down memory lane, and it is the chance that the library will take to present the third annual Robert E. Haltino, Haltiner uh, Alpena Historian Award, uh, Historic Preservation Award, so that's a nice opportunity as well. Um, the first one of those awards went to Bob Haltiner, yes. and the second one to Lori LaCrosse, so it'll be interesting to see yes. what happens Who with the third one. Yeah, so that's a great program, and it's free, and if you're in the library and you just cannot make it to the Pictorial History program on Tuesday night at 6.30, right off of the Alpena History Room, so sort of um, at the top of the stairs there is a display of sort of a PowerPoint of a bunch of old photographs and memorabilia oh, from perfect. early schools in Alpena. So if you really can't make the presentation, you could still see some of the pictures and things. Perfect. So that'll be terrific. And then on 
Thursday night, we have one of the first programs leading us up to the Alexander McCall Smith Authors in the Fall appearance. Now that appearance of Alexander McCall Smith isn't until November 10th, but we are planning some programs to sort of get people ready, get familiar with the work and the location. Alexander McCall Smith has written 65 books, but the ones that are probably the best known around here are the number one ladies detective agency and those are set in Botswana which um, is now Zimbabwe I think and um, there is a professor a part-time professor at ACC named Findi um, okay Findi we know yeah Mashanini, Mashanini, sorry. Okay. Um, and she grew up in South Africa. Ooh. So she's going to provide some reflections and some insight into what it was like to grow up there and um, what, the, what the people are like, what the climate's like. Just give you a little bit of a sense of what it's like to be in uh, Africa. So she's going to do that. That's actually an Association of Lifelong Learners program hosted at the library on Thursday at 7 o'clock. Okay, so, and the tickets for Alexander are flying off the shelves. They really are flying out the door. We have um, rather few tickets left for the orchestra section. Now, they are only $10. It's Sunday, the 10th of November okay. at Alpena High School. We do have more tickets, but the, um, the tickets in the orchestra section are nearly sold out. So if that's something that you wanted to see, you should step into the library and pick out your seats and, and buy your tickets quickly. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other big thing that we have planned is next weekend we have a readathon and it was inspired by the folks that you know by the relay for life teams around the area and um we had a group of people talking about them and they a couple of them said it's kind of funny they said i love the idea i love everything that relays about i just wish it was a little more sedentary or wish there was some way i could sort of read and raise money for cancer and they said you know what why not why can't we do that so for 24 hours, starting on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, okay. we'll have a readathon. So we will, for readathoners, stay open all night. Wow. And um, until 10 o'clock the next morning. And we're asking people to sign up and get sponsors. So folks could sponsor you for a dollar an hour or more than that if they want. And the proceeds would go to Relay for Life. Um, we will be open all night, but you don't have to be there all night. You okay. could read for an hour, for three hours, for five hours. You can just sign up and say, this is what I can, this is the reading that I can commit to. Um, and if you do decide to stay overnight, we will have some activities in the wee hours to kind of keep you awake awake and charged up and inspired. And we'll even do some read-alouds. Uh, Ann Harity and uh, Joe Basto Ooh. are going to host some read-alouds for us. So that'll be really terrific and kind of keep, keep things going. So whether you want someplace quiet and secluded that you can read or some encouragement and enthusiasm about reading, you can find both of those at the library on that day. And all you have to do is sign up. Um, and all the proceeds will actually donate to the um, Alpena Lions Club's Relay for Life team, and they will forward them on to the Cancer Society. Perfect. So I think that'll really be a fun, a yes, fun event. Will. And I, I have to agree that it's nice to be able to actually read for, um, read for cancer research. Right. And we have about two minutes left. So very quickly, computer classes are starting yes. up again at the library. We've talked about them a number of times. Computer security, different software, things like Facebook. I just got a new iPad or a um, tablet. How do I use it? We have classes for all of that. There's 15 different classes. They're on our website, okay. www.alpinalibrary.org. You have to register for them, and they fill up quickly. So if that's something you're interested in, look this week and call the library at 356-6188, okay. extension 14. The other thing folks come in and ask us about, I can't figure out how to make this work on my laptop, or I can't quite figure out this on my um, tablet and so we are going to try one hour Monday through Thursday for tech help Yay. so our technology person Nancy will be able to give you a little bit of advice for your computer this is not a lesson or a class and it's not a repair if your computer's broken you need to take it to okay to a computer repair place but if you just can't figure out how to make something work or what's the little shortcut for this or something like that those kinds of questions Nancy will be on hand to answer Monday through Thursday one hour a day you can find out more information about that on our website as well okay um, and story hour 
for four to five year olds. This is a preschool style program. It starts in September. You do have to register. Mary is the person to call at 356-6188. Her okay. extension is 13. This program really is, it's, it's stories and songs and the things you'd expect, but it's also activities that will get your child ready for, for preschool, for kindergarten rather, for, for school age activities. So using scissors, using glue, Perfect. doing a lot of craft activities, a lot of gross motor skill activities, hopping and skipping. Um, and parents come to that and drop their, and bring their kid to uh, Mary and then they stay in the library, but the child stays in the class sort of like a big kid, Ooh, sort okay. of preschool style. And those you do have to sign up for. We also have tiny tots for zero to 24 months that you don't have to sign up for. It starts Thursday the 26th and goes from 10 to 11 and runs for six weeks. Okay, we're out of time. Thank you very much for being here. Look forward to talking to you next month. Thanks, Nancy. Please stay tuned for Dr. Olin Joint and following these messages. Good morning. I am Jay Walterite, Director of Public Information and Marketing for Alpena Community College, and this is the ACC portion of the Talk the Town. With me this morning is Dean Don McMaster. Hello, Jay. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. You're one of the veterans of the show. Yes. And because you have many good things to talk about. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to talk about today were all of the workings of the TAACCT federal grant that the colleges and you are administering right now. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about what that is in general first before we get to the specifics. Very good. Um, TAACCCT stands for Trade Adjustment Assistance Community College Career Training Grant and it stemmed from an initiative President Obama rolled out in 2010. Um, his premise was that community colleges are very influential, essential and in terms of creating opportunities for people, revitalizing the economy, retraining people who have been displaced in the economic downturn. So he created a, a fairly substantial pot of dollars that ACC competed um, successfully for. Mm -hmm. And we were funded in 2011, um, and the amount was uh, substantial, substantial enough to do some, some, some really interesting things. Mm -hmm. Um, that we've been able to roll out in the intervening two years. Mm -hmm. So why don't we talk a little bit about uh, those things. Uh, the first thing I wanted you to mention were our green building seminars that are mm -hmm. coming up. Yeah, the, 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 the central premise of our proposal was uh, uh, sustainability and green jobs. Mm -hmm. And one of the uh, uh, areas that we've uh, developed a curriculum in and found an excellent trainer is green building. So we've run a circuit, a cycle of uh, courses, they're free, free mm -hmm. seminars, um, uh, that began last spring, uh, both here in Alpena at ACC and down at our branch campus, um, uh, the Huron Shores campus. Mm -hmm. And we're doing a, that again this fall. Um, actually, the uh, um, the 13th and the 14th mm -hmm. is the first one here. So if people want to attend, uh, they just need to get in touch with us. Uh, we register you at the uh, beginning of class. There's, there's no fee and the instructor is outstanding. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about, about the content of the course and who would be interested, and who would benefit? Uh, I'll start with the second question first. It's a good one. Um, people who are interested, who have attended, who really found it valuable are contractors, um, people who uh, want to make their home more energy efficient or know mm -hmm. how that works, uh, people who sell appliances, um, realtors, uh, building inspectors. So the first part of it um, has to do with uh, building an energy efficient home, mm -hmm. uh, sizing your, uh, uh, your heat source right, uh, the proper windows, uh, sizing the rooms correctly. Mm -hmm. um, green building sounds somewhat faddish, but um, for people who do it professionally, uh, ener doing energy audits and these sorts of things, there's a, a significant amount of real savings that can, can uh, derive from doing it correctly. Hmm. Now our instructor Bruce Frost has taught construction management down at CMU for 20 years hmm. and uh, we've worked with him a fair amount over the last four or five years. He's a wonderful guy, very good teacher, uh, nationally recognized as a green building expert. Hmm. Well great. Um, 
How would people sign up for that or uh, um, find more information? Yes, you could find it on our college website, mm -hmm. uh, administered <laughs> and uh, built very nicely by through the office of J. Walter Wright. Um, uh, our normal contact, uh, Catherine Maharg, is uh, um, out uh, having some uh, recovering some, from some health work. So the person to get a hold of would be me, mm -hmm. uh, Don McMaster. Um, and uh, um, just call me on the phone, 358-7344, um, or email me. Mm -hmm. And um, um, that, that would be the best way to do it now. All right. Well, great. There's a lot of other things going on with the grant. What else would you like to talk about? Well, one of the things that we're most excited about is the Marine Tech Program, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and that, that was uh, one of the early things that we worked on, and uh, it's probably created the most um, positive, you know, local interest and excitement. Mm -hmm. It's a partnership with uh, the Thunder Bay Marine Sanctuary, and, you know, it's a creation by ACC of a two-year uh, associate's degree, an mm -hmm. occupational program in marine technology. Um, so the front end of the program is a lot of on-water work mm -hmm. where uh, people are going out uh, and uh, getting diving experience, diving cer certification, and diving on wreckage. Mm -hmm. And um, But the spine of the program is uh, the operation, maintenance, and troubleshooting of remote operated vehicles, mm -hmm. ROVs, the mm -hmm. things that do a lot of the underwater work um, uh, in the oceans, a lot of oil and gas, particularly, uh, but not exclusively. And um, so we've procured, uh, I think you, we had a guest on a couple weeks yep, ago, David. David Cummins has done a great job, mm -hmm. um, worked hard and smart, um, and to breathe life